Hello YouTube, I am back with another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an object track to the nearest of other objects in Blender. So this is what we're going to end up with right here in front of you. And if we play the game, we see a cone in the center is going to track to a cube. And we have a button that we can press to move that cube further away. Once it gets too far away, the cone will turn to a different cube because now that cube is closer. So we're going to make a new Blend file. We're going to move this default cube off to the side, up in the top center. We're going to switch from Blender Render to Blender Game. Drag up this bottom window, turn it into a logic editor. And then on the cube, we're going to add the property cube. We're then going to stretch over the side window just a little bit, go to the Physics tab, and check mark Actor. We're then going to split our 3D window into two windows. This new window is going to be a text editor. You're going to do text open text block, and then we're going to open the script that is in the description. And if you stick around, I will explain what the script does and how it does it. Uh, but for now, I'll just show you how to get it running. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do shift A, add mesh cone. And we're going to enter edit mode, hit RX90. And we're going to do origin to geometry. So that basically just turns the cone sideways. We're then going to add a near sensor, leave it named near with a capital N. We're going to be looking for the property cube. That's the property we put on our cube over here earlier. I'm going to put in a distance of 10 and a reset distance of 11. We're also going to turn on pulse mode. And then we're going to add a Python controller. And we're going to attach the track to nearest.py script. We're then going to add a edit object actuator and this is going to be a track 2 actuator and we can wire that into the controller we're then going to rename this actuator into track with a capital T and we're also going to check mark 3d so now if we hit play we see that uh, nothing actually happens or nothing appears to happen that's just because the the cone is turned around so if we go to the object tab relations extras we can turn the axis for tracking to the negative y-axis, and now if we hit play, the cone instantly turns around towards that cube. So at this point, it's actually working, and if we duplicate this cube around and make a closer cube over here, and hit play, we see it tracks to the closer cube. And so to make, to show that it does snap to the nearest one, we can add a keyboard sensor, that'll be a spacebar sensor, an AND controller, and a motion actuator. And this motion actuator is going to go on the negative y-axis. So now if we hit play, we hit spacebar and that cube moves away. And eventually the cone just turns and looks at the other cube because that cube's closer. And that concludes that part of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, link in the description below. Also, if you would like to suggest future tutorials, there is a link in the description uh, to go to a form that you can fill out. Um, which just makes it easier for me to organize requests. So for you guys, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Now for the scripting people. Let's go through this script. So I'm going to turn on the syntax highlighting and the line numbers just to make it a little bit easier to read. So these first few lines here, we're just importing standard stuff like the logic module. And then we're getting the controller that the script is attached to and the owner of the object, which would be the cone. We are also then getting the sensor, the near sensor, and the edit object actuator. So the first thing we do is we check to see if the near sensor is positive, because if it isn't, there's no need to do anything. We can then use this function, hit object list, to um, get a list of objects that the near sensor has within its collision radius. We're then going to make a couple of local variables here, so we're going to use we're going to use dist for distance and obj for object. And we're just initializing, initializing them here. So distance is equal to zero, object is equal to none. Then we're going to use a for loop here. And we're basically going to iterate over all of the objects that are in the hit object list. So for instance, right now, both of these cubes are in the hit object list for the near sensor. So we're going to check one and then the other. So for instance, we'll check this cube, and we'll see if the distance between this cube and the cone is 
less than dist, which would either be the distance to another object or zero, or if dist is equal to zero, in other words, there is no other cube found yet, we set distance to the distance of the cube to the cone, and then we set obj to the item in the list, which is the cube here. So, for instance, right now, we would go over this cube first. We'd say, yeah, that's all good. That's the cube we'll track to. Then we'll go over this cube, do the same thing, and we'll see that this item's distance is less than the distance between this cube and the cone. And so then we'll set our distance equal to the distance between this cube and the cone, and we'll set our object to this cube. Down here, then, we will set the track object in our actuator, in our edit object actuator, to be equal to the object or whichever cube is closest, and we will then activate that actuator, which results in the cube, the cone tracking the cubes. Alright guys, I hope you understood all that mumbo jumbo. Thank you guys very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Do 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 do